coming up on this episode of State of the Arts with Kendria Mecca. And I'm always seeking uh, the narrative, uh, whether it's the artist's personal narrative or the narrative of the art of the American South. Oftentimes when people do highly political work, um, it's so strongly in your face that you end up preaching to the choir. Uh, the people that really need to hear this message don't see it. But with Juan's work, no matter who you are, you're immediately drawn in by the sheer beauty of the work, and then you get the narrative, and that narrative is so strong and so important. You know, the draft uh, really looks at how we tag our youth early in life, from 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 years old, we tag them based on their athletic abilities. Uh, I'm using cattle ear tags here because that's sort of how we treat you know, young folks many times. Mm -hmm. And how high can you jump, jump? How fast can you run? And the hoops in this case uh, also become halos, you see, because mm -hmm. we want these young people to become our saviors. We want them to save the family, you know, save the coach, save the school, you know, mm -hmm. and then maybe even save the next school. And then all those monkeys below, you see, are missing parts mm -hmm. because that's just all they are. They're just monkeys out to perform. So if they break a leg or break an arm, hurt a leg, whatever it is, it's not really a problem because if we have some just like you mm -hmm. ready to take your place, as soon as you get hurt, I'm so sorry to hear that. Uh, could you step aside, please? And again, it's simply a commodity. Mm -hmm. And we treat them as such. And I am in no Welcome, welcome, welcome to New Orleans. I came all this way from Charlotte to bring you this new episode of State of the Arts where we will be featuring the work of Juan Logan. So we came to the Ogden to visit this exhibition called I'll Save You Tomorrow. And we'll have some behind the scenes commentary from the artist as well as an interview and um, some commentary from the curator. But first, a word from our sponsor. The streets are talking about Najee Dorsey and his upcoming show at the Columbus Museum. In Leaving Mississippi, Reflections on Heroes and Folklore, Najee uses a colorful cast of characters to pay homage to historic events and Southern life. You don't want to miss it. From August 21st to January 5th at the Columbus Museum, Leaving Mississippi, Reflections on Heroes and Folklores, August 21st to January 4th at the Columbus Museum. And as always, you can join Najee, me, and about 15,000 other people who love black art at blackartinamerica.com. It's free and it's definitely was popping in these streets. And that's the word on the street. Now let's get back to the show. And I'm here with Bradley Summerall at the Ogden Museum of Southern Art. In a moment, we're going to go inside, and Mrs. Summerall was so great about giving us a private tour. But first, what I want to show you guys is something really special that's part of the permanent collection here. There is a wonderful uh, collection of some of the outsider artists that we covered in our first season. They've got a little Lonnie Holly, they've got a little Thornton Dow, and some other really special things. So let's check that out first, and then we'll be back to go inside this exhibition. And uh, in Thornton's Tiger series, um, he, the tiger initially was self-portrait. It represented Thornton's um, struggle in life. Uh, but he also used it to represent African-American male struggle in American culture. Uh, and as Thornton got older, started thinking of bigger pictures, we all do when we get older, Thornton said that the tiger can represent anybody struggling against any form of oppression in their life through any difficult times. Mm -hmm. Just like Juan's head form mm -hmm. started as self-portrait, became a symbol of African-American identity, and then became this abstracted individualism. Uh, they kind of went through the same process uh, with their images. Tell me a little bit about um, the name, I'll Save You Tomorrow. Well, I can take you to that title. There's a lot going on here. Again, this piece is a piece that utilizes 30 years of collected palettes in the background, but also utilizes the trimmings of those palettes to create um, this highly textured surface. Uh, this, the image on the right-hand side of the painting is an overturned boat and on the left, we have uh, the Red Cross, the international symbol for uh, 
help is on the way, really. Mm -hmm. um, and this piece started uh, in, in, with Juan when he was, he called a friend to ask for a favor. And uh, his friend said, uh, well, I can't really help you today, but uh, I, I might be able to help you tomorrow. And Juan, you know, was thinking, I don't need your help tomorrow, I need your help today. Uh, that's why I called. Um, so, as often as the case with Juan, something personal triggered a larger conversation uh, about um, our culture, our nation, and how we act. And so, Juan was thinking about Katrina, and Juan was thinking about how, you know, not only do we weigh our options um, as individuals when someone reaches out to us for help, but also how we as communities um, and uh, as a nation often respond to uh, people asking for help. And so here you have the Red Cross, but it's veiled. It's, it's just out of reach, it's hidden. Um, the boat is upturned with uh, all of the life preservers inside that are not helping anyone. <laughs> uh, because they're inside the upturned boat. And he was thinking that about, bow tie again. well, you know, even in the midst of a, of a disaster uh, like Katrina, there's always that one guy that stays clean. Mm -hmm. He's got something to sell you. Yeah, <laughs> and gets out of this whole thing making a little money. And that's what the bow tie is. Um, also, the uh, collaged um, lottery tickets, scratch offs, power balls. It's another symbol that Juan uses often in his work uh, to represent this kind of hope of salvation that never really comes. I am so thankful to Bradley Summerall and the Ogden Museum for Southern Art for their great hospitality while I was in the Big Easy. But now it's time to head back to Charlotte and get some commentary from the man himself, Juan Logan. Well, in looking at this piece, it's really dealing with several elements or concerns that uh, we as all Americans uh, have to deal with on a daily basis. In this particular case, I was looking at that big white cloud, which is representative of all the, the banking industry, as we will. Uh, the treadmill there, dealing with the lottery industry, and of course to the left of that, looking at that cellular structure, simply looking at the medical industries. Mm. Um, now, a sugar house was used in Jamaica in 17, 1837, and then it was also used in um, Charleston, South Carolina. Um, but the sugar house was simply a treadmill on which uh, people were tied or attached, and they simply had to walk. It was a way of breaking their will. I'm arguing that Many of those things exist today, but in much more subtle ways. When we look at the lottery industry, for example, um, those who can least afford it are generally those who play it the most. Right. But it's the opportunity to escape, to get right. away, to get away from their current existence, if you will. The faces that are in well, they, so many of the pieces. The faces, you know, um, have morphed over the years. I think I used my first head. Um, in 1967, actually, and uh, it has morphed and evolved over the years. And at one point, it became uh, the head of Anchimama, and then it morphed from that into back into my head, and then it became sort of every person's head, mm. because all of our imaginings and everything that we ever were or will be takes place there first. Some clouds are darker. Um, it's really looking at that space below. Uh, which is really represented above Sullivan's Island. Sullivan's Island was sort of our Ellis Island in a way. You know, I did a painting some years ago entitled Sullivan's Island and the Pest House because during its history there were four pest houses on Sullivan's Island and the residents of Sullivan's were always afraid that uh, of contamination and disease and so on and so forth for all the slaves that were coming into that island. So they created these pest houses, which are sort of like quarantine houses, except they didn't have roofs on them. So they were still subject to the heat of the day, the rain, and so on and so forth. But I always imagined that quite like everything else, it falls into the soil. That all of those souls, you know, weeping, pain, sorrow, all becoming part of that. That as it went into the soil, then you know how the heat draws it out and it goes back and, and forms clouds and it rains back down again. That I imagine that some of those clouds would indeed be darker and some of those drops would indeed be black. So some clouds are darker. To find out more about this and other exciting things that Juan Logan has going on, visit JuanLogan.com and follow him on social media. 
And that does it for this episode of State of the Arts. It's been a pleasure sharing this footage from the Ogden with you and sitting with Juan Logan. A very special shout out to Bradley and to Juan for helping me pull this all together. I hope you'll join me next time for State of the Arts with Kendria Mecca.